We're live. We're live. Uh, uh, excellent. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my Dragon Con panel. <laughs> this is, uh, uh, you know, I mean, about as out of sorts as a Dragon Con panel uh, normally is. My name is Justin Robert Young. Uh, I, I made a decision today uh, because, you know, obviously this is going to be something that, uh, you know, Dragon Con means a lot to me, means a lot to my wife. I got married at Dragon Con. Uh, but I was like, all right, well, here we go. We got a digital, a digital program here. And, uh, <laughs> I'm like, all right, what situation, what kind of me should I do? Should I be resting up? Should I be going to sleep a little early? Should I be making sure that I am in the tip top, uh, uh, uh situation? Well, that's not what i would be doing for dragon con no <laughs> for dragon con i'd be out there with eighty thousand of my closest friends having a great time uh, uh drinking far too many sweet water 420s i'd probably be muling a bunch of uh natty lights and dharma non-alcoholic beverage labels and and i'd be having a good time with you guys right here so indeed I decided to uh, 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 make sure that I was in the same state and I have uh, uh, provisions to make sure that we stay there. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Honestly, I don't. I, I don't know whether or not this is, uh, you know, just, just going to be a politics, uh, politics, politics panel. I don't know whether or not uh, uh, we are, I mean, uh, we, we can take Q and a here in the chat. We can talk about, uh, uh, politics stuff. To be honest, what I really want to do is commiserate. I want to commiserate with everybody. This sucks, right? <laughs> Am I right? This sucks. Uh, and it didn't hit me until my wife, who again, I met at Dragon Con, literally met my wife for the first time I ever saw the woman that would become my wife was at Dragon Con. When she showed me a Facebook group, a Facebook group, all right? Here's what this Facebook group is, and everybody can join it now, although it's probably going to be pointless because we're a little late in the game. The Facebook group that my wife showed me was a group wherein people are pretending they're at Dragon Con. And so they're literally just posting pictures and, and, and text posts that are all just like, hey, my panel just let out. Who wants to eat at Gus's Fried Chicken? Or uh, uh, I'm going to wait until the Sky Bridge dies before I try to go from the Hilton to the Hyatt. Or uh uh, uh just, just silly stuff. And, and she's like, oh, isn't this funny? And, and I'm not going to lie to you, dear friends. It was sad. <laughs> it was the opposite of funny. It was, it was just uh, uh, kind of depressing because I didn't realize how much I'm, I, I, I love this and I miss this. So I, I guarantee you this will be the last maudlin element of the panel because I don't need to tell you that this blows, but I did feel that I needed to start things off like that because, uh, uh, you know, we can all we can all share our trauma. If you're unfamiliar with who I am, my name is Justin Robert Young. Uh, for years and years uh, here at DragonCon, we used to bring the podcasting panel to a thunderous close with Night Attack, uh, a comedy podcast that I do with Brian and uh, Brian Brushwood. That is, and then. Uh, since then, I've uh, you know done uh, my, my my politics shows, and and I try to bring you know a little bit of an energy, a little bit of an I don't know if anarchist is the right word, but a fun energy, an energy, a lively energy, because I know that a lot of times, a good friend of mine once said that a, the true definition of a nerd is somebody who gets on a telephone to talk about how cool the telephone is. And and I, I I do feel like sometimes these podcasting panels tend to be, uh uh you know us talking about a thing that is talking about a thing, 
So I want to bring something that's a little bit more uh, of, a, of a live wire, a little bit more energetic. What I primarily talk about is politics and Georgia, the spiritual and, you know, hopefully next year physical home of Dragon Con is something that is very much tied up in that. So we will uh, we will do our best. I'll be happy to take Q&A here. I see there's a, already a bunch of people in the chat. We can we can talk about uh, uh, whatever you guys want. I will say that uh, I would like to make a proclamation, whether or not people agree with it. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. But in my estimation as a political pundit, the host of politics, 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 I will say that it blows my mind that people talk about uh, uh, whether or not states like Georgia are ever going to flip from Republican to Democrat. And I know that these things are, are close, right? I know that Beto came very, very close in Texas. I know that Stacey Abrams came very, 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 very close in Georgia. These are statewide elections. And so that might say, all right, with the right message, with the right candidate, that you can move the needle. I, I guess I would just bet against it. And here's my proclamation. I don't think George is going to go blue. I don't. I don't. But maybe you disagree with me. I'll take a look here in, 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 in the chat uh, uh, right now. Uh, <laughs> before this panel, I sat outside my apartment building for an hour and then slowly walked about the building four times. Then I sat down at the panel just to get the full experience. That's the, oh man. All right. So, so we will, we will, we will get a little bit into how much we are missing Dragon Con. We will get a little bit into how much, oh, I didn't realize how much I missed traveling to Dragon Con. That was the thing that really hit me. The idea of like getting on that plane ride on Thursday morning, we, we, cause we're on the West coast. We, we go early as hell, early as possible flight. So we'll get to San Francisco. We will, uh, 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 you know, get into the United club or the Amex club, whichever. And we'll like, you know, down a couple mimosas, get on that big long flight. And then the second you touch down at Atlanta Hartsfield international airport, the second you do it, you just know it's on, you know, it's on. I like to walk. I don't know about y'all, but when, uh, for those of you who fly into dragon con, I like to walk. Uh, Cause from the United terminal, Atlanta airport has this, um, <laughs> like the story of Atlanta, like from the United terminal to where you get your bags and you see all of it. And it's like, I'm watching Atlanta burn. I'm watching racial history. I, I have, I have all this like stimulus. And for whatever reason, the, 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 the concept of, uh, uh, the, the the story of Atlanta from from Gone with the Wind to to our modern era always just gets me in the mood for drinking with a bunch of nerds like that is like it's it, 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 it's like it's like a Pavlovian response I know when I see Atlanta in flames it is time to talk about the most ridiculous all oh, the ridiculous Dragon Con conversations just the best just the best um. <laughs> yes, exactly. Cause Kishore is one of my my dragon con. He's in the chat now. Kishore, I literally have have only by uh a, a, an, an an abiding sense that I want to keep everybody safe, my my friends and family as safe as possible through this pandemic for which has ravaged our land. Uh, not just out of habit driven down to Kishore's house in San Francisco to see if we could go get a drink at three o'clock in the morning. Like that, that is, that is how bound I am to dragon con tradition because normally most of my day is, is as he, as Kishore pointed out in the chat, me just texting him, Hey, where are you at? Where are you at? Because there's a, there's a few people. There's a few people that, you know, when you text them, where are you at? You're gonna end up at the metro at three o'clock in the morning, listening to very, very, very drunk people uh, try to sing karaoke while you just hammer back very, very, very ill-advised drinks. Spoiler alert: the drinks you're drinking at three o'clock in the morning—bad idea. They're always a bad idea. 
that's never no one in history has ever woken up and said thank god i had those drinks at three o'clock in the morning oh my god my life is so much better for those drinks i had at three o'clock in the morning if you're lit and you're looking for drinks at three o'clock in the morning that should be the sign that you should knock it off but i don't because i'm very stupid All right. Uh, yeah, hot beverage is going to cut in line. That's all. Oh, man, that's another thing. I guess we are just going to talk about how much we miss Dragon Con, huh? Is that what we're just going to do? I feel like we're just going to talk about how much we miss Dragon Con. I feel like this is a cathartic thing. This is just us getting together and finally having the conversation that we need to have. The conversation we need to have is just what is this Dragon Con shaped hole in my heart? It's going to be weird next year. I'll tell you that it is going to be weird. I haven't had this, but a few of my friends and, and family have when they go back and watch movies and they get weirded out by like a crowd shot. They're like, they're not social distancing. Everybody was watching the, um, the last dance, the Michael uh, uh, Jordan documentary. And uh, I had, I had, I had friends of me text and it's like, they're kind of weird. They had all those people in one place. It's kind of odd. And it happened like that too, right? Like this, this, this COVID thing was, was quick. It was very quick. It was like one day and I watched it. I literally was in a sports bar. Now this is kids remember when, right? I think it was March 7th, but it was right before, um, it was, it was, uh, sorry, right after my birthday and I went to a sports bar and I was watching the televisions and smart people, science people like, uh, uh, Kishore, they've been on their Twitters, you know, uh, uh, talking about like, man, it's cause in the Bay area is where I am. I'm in Oakland in the Bay area. Uh, uh, this had been a thing for a little bit. Seattle and and the Bay South Bay specifically San Jose had been among the first places hit by it. Smart people like Ashore were on their Twitter saying, "Hey, it's irresponsible that the Warriors are still having games. It's irresponsible that the San Jose Sharks are still having games." And you know, because I'm a man who really needs to burn his hand on the I I got to burn my hand on 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 the uh, grill two or three times before I realize that I am fallible to fire. Like, I was just kind of like, all right, yeah, whatever, science, man. Who cares? And then at that sports bar, I'm watching. I'm eating my chicken wings. So imagine you know, I'm drinking beer, I'm eating my chicken wings. And I just like, in, in, in the cinematic version, I would, I would drop a chicken wing bone on my plate uh, as I see NBA suspend season. It was the same night that Donald Trump gave a speech in the Oval Office. And then on my Twitter, I see Tom Hanks got COVID. And I'm like, uh-oh. It's on. It's on. And indeed it was. Here in the Bay Area, uh, everything shut down, like, almost immediately. We were, we were among the first places to shut down. We were among, uh, and, and we are among the slowest to open, for the record. Literally. The only uh, only Friday were uh, uh, barber shops allowed to open, barber shops and salons, and that was almost entirely thanks to the uh, 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 thankless effort by freedom fighter Nancy Pelosi, who got her hair did and it became a whole thing on you know national news. And it was only after that that Alameda County, where I live, was like, okay, yeah, sure, you can open up barber shops. That's how that's how tight we are here, and and it makes sense, right? This is this is a this is a rough thing, and it's going to be in in our psyches for a long time because this is a year, the likes of which, uh, you know, nobody has seen since. I mean, ever because you can you can say that there might be some really old person, some a hundred and two-year-old actually you have to be older than that you have to be like 113 114 to at least remember the 1918 pandemic but 
the reason why we're doing the things that we're doing now is because we learned from what happened then. Well, we've never shut stuff down like we've done this time. We've never, uh, 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 you know, taken the precautionary measures that we are taking right now. And a lot of that's because of the lessons. You know, we had a, a pandemic in the 50s. We didn't shut anything down. We had a pandemic in the 60s and we didn't shut anything down. Um, and that's, I, I don't want to get into kind of the, the, the fights on that, but I do want to say that we've all experienced it. We all know it. And we're all going to know it next year. We're all going to know it when whatever form of Dragon Con exists next year, and we're going to see exactly uh, whether or not people, um, you know, want to come out in the same kind of way. I want to, man. I want to, you know, my, my, there's a part of me that does want to be devil may care. And I was, I was, I was very devil may care. I was very like, oh, whatever. Let me fly to Sweden. I'll have some Swede cough in my mouth and I'll just sleep it off in, uh, you know, some hotel and uh, uh, I'll knock it out. I'll be, I'll be clean. These were actual thoughts that I had in my head. I asked my wife. That was something I actually asked my wife. Spoiler alert, she said no. She said, don't do that. You're not allowed to do that. That's, that's not a cool thing. Uh, it's not a good thing. You should not be thinking about that. But in my role as a uh, political podcaster, I was uh, very excited. I really only started the podcast, the political podcast, about four years ago. And so I knew that, you know, these things tend to move in, well, they literally move in cycles in terms of presidential elections. And that the next time that everybody was going to be very excited was literally 2020. Oh, my God. 2020. Oh, the beautiful promise of 2020. When it was New Year's Eve and we thought about 2020, oh, how did we look at it with stars in our eyes? What an amazing year. I think, like, Halloween, I think, is on, like, a Friday. Cinco de Mayo was on Taco Tuesday. Like, there was just so much. There was so much that was, like, just there for us. So excited. So pleased. We, uh, so young we were. And so after I traveled all the uh, all for the primaries, I went to New Hampshire and Iowa and uh, Nevada, not Nevada. I found that out. It's Nevada. You don't if you say Nevada, they will punch you. They'll like Johnny Cage split punch you right in the balls. That that will happen. Uh, South Carolina, and the first, the only travel that I've done since then was down to Tulsa. And I was in, you know, I was covering the Trump rally. Trump, you know, back in the day, Donald Trump decided it was a cool thing to have a rally in the middle of a pandemic. Don't worry. I mean, that guy apparently is not running for president now. But there was a guy named Donald Trump that was, that did uh, uh, have a rally in Tulsa. And I flew out for it to cover it. And uh, I initially was like, ah, here we go. Finally, freedom. Enough of these cucks in the Bay Area with their rules and regulations. Finally, we can cut loose. I can do what I want. I can interview people. I can go to a Bennigan's. I don't even know if there's a Bennigan's in Tulsa, but maybe I was hoping there was one. And there was one moment that totally changed my perspective. One moment totally changed my perspective. I'd gotten done covering the Trump rally and uh, I'd gone over to a friend's house and we were just like BSing and talking and catching up and everything. And then I come back to my hotel and I think, I, I, I feel like I've done a pretty good job covering. I got all the sound I need to do. I got to edit it the next day, but my job for that day was done. And I thought to myself, mm, I'm on the road. You want to know what I should do? I should do. We're searching back for normalcy. We are searching back for that moment where we can all be, uh, 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 we can all feel like our entire society has not been washed away by this horrid disease. I'm going to do what I always do after a job well done when I'm on the road. I'm going to go down to the bar. I'm going to get myself a little drink. 
and I'm just going to play Hearthstone on my phone and not talk to anybody. This is my favorite thing to do in the world. In fact, it, it, it go back and amend that moment where I saw the COVID stuff and I dropped the chicken wing from my fingers. You also have to put in uh, that I was like trying to play Hearthstone with my pinky while eating chicken wings. I you always keep the pinkies clean so you can uh, so you can play your cards and uh, and do that. And so I do. I go down. I get in the elevator. I, I go down. I'm wearing a mask. Some people aren't. Yeah, it's a thing. But I'm like, whatever, it's fine. Some people out here in Oakland that wear masks, it is what it is. I get down out of the elevator and I go to, you know, some bars have like a lobby bar and others like have an actual restaurant. This is one of them hotels that have like an actual restaurant with a bar. Get out of the elevator and I take one step to that restaurant. And I see something that I had not seen since that sports bar in March. I see a jam-packed, like, assholes-to-elbows uh, bar. Like, just packed. Absolutely. Music's playing. Like, just like Carrie Underwood. Like, smash it, man. And like people are yelling over the music. Like, this is a bar in Tulsa and it is packed. I stopped. I stopped in my, in my, in my, uh, uh, in, like, I only got that one step. And I'm just looking because it's something that, again, was, was very, it was odd to me, but also it was just like, it was jarring because I, I didn't know what to do. It was what I wanted. I wanted normalcy. This is normal. Never in my life, dear friends, have I ever looked at a crowded bar and not thought, well, maybe my first thought is, can I get a drink there? But in a, in a hotel, I would have been like, uh, like cool, rad. It's it, it's a packed little bar. Doesn't matter to me none. I'm putting these AirPods in. I'm playing a uh, 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 aggro hunter, and 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 that'll be it. That that that's what that's my pleasure. It's what I enjoy. So I'm frozen. I'm frozen in front of this bar, and apparently I'm standing there long enough that another guy who is coming because it's one of those places in a hotel in Dragon Con. You know, y'all know this. Uh, uh, there's no bathroom in the restaurant. You have to like go to the like rest the the the, the, or the you have to go to the bathroom outside of it. So some dude I guess had gone to the bathroom. And he's coming back, and he sees me frozen, just looking. Like music still playing, but for me nothing. Muted. I don't know how to process this. And this guy, apparently, I looked so out of sorts that this other guy was, uh, uh, he's like, yeah, crazy, right? And I look at him and I'm like, yeah, dude, that's, that's crazy. And he's like, yeah, looks like a bodybuilding convention. Now I come back, right? So now the Carrie Underwood music comes back. Now I'm no longer, I'm no longer in, in, in the muted mode. I'm like, the hell? What, what are you talking about? I look in, and sure enough, half the people there are these statuesque, like, six-foot-two or dudes that are, like, built out, right? And I'm like, oh, good God, I didn't even notice that they, in that bar, the people that were there were large dudes so the guy goes on this all might have happened in two seconds right but for, but for me it was a half hour this guy goes yeah they're all secret service they're all there for the president because the president spoke so a lot of secret service people come in blah 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 and it was at that moment that I knew one thing. 
Because to go to Tulsa, I knew I was going to have to come back clean. I knew I was going to have to stay at a hotel when I got back to Oakland. I knew I was going to have to take a test, wound up taking two. I knew I was going to have to prove that I was free of this virus before I came back into my house, before I came back into my apartment building. I owed it to my neighbors. I owed it to my wife. And I knew one thing, that I may or may not have already contracted COVID, just talking to people out there in Tulsa. I may or may not have already uh, uh, contracted COVID being on that plane. I might still contract COVID when I'm on the plane back. But here's what I know for sure. If I go in there and I get a drink and I get a table, even if I get a table and I'm facing away from everybody and literally anybody who comes to talk to me, I just go, ah, get away. Like, even if that happens, I know for a fact that I will believe I got COVID there. I will believe that I got COVID at that lobby bar. And so I did something that I've never done in my entire life. And after a long, hard day's work, I decided to 180 and walk back into the elevator and go back up. And it was at that moment that I realized that, you know, this wasn't normal. This wasn't going to be something that I, that, that was just going to go away or at least, and still we'll still have to deal with this going forward. We're going to have to deal with this next year. We're going to have to deal with this probably for the rest of our lives, because this is a, this is a situation again, that nobody has ever seen uh, uh, in, in, in history. Uh, we have a couple questions here. Uh, are bears considered animals? Are bears considered animals? I mean, I would say zoologically speaking, of course, right? Now, are they? Well, I mean, I feel like if you get a major market sports team named after you, then you are probably either either a, an animal or an action, right? Although all the well. Or people, you know, there is there is some line of like crappy teams are named after like verbs, like the buzz or something like that. But the bears, the Chicago Bears, I mean, they're not all animals. Uh, uh, look, you 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 uh, uh live long enough in the Bay Area, you know that. Bears come in all different stripes. And there are many, many, many different kinds of bears out here uh, uh, in the Bay. Uh, all right. So here we go. Oh, 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 oh uh, uh, Charles McFall, our amazing director here for the podcast track is uh, Charles. Actually, if you can find, yeah, keep, keep finding good questions and popping them here in the zoom chat. So I don't have to, uh, I don't have to scroll through here. Uh, you always take the opposite position of Scott Johnson. Do you do that just to mess with him? So for those of you who are not aware, I uh, uh, every Tuesday I am on the morning stream, an amazing program put on by an amazing couple amazing humans, uh, Brian Abbott and Scott Johnson, and I do the politics chat. It's not a it's not a political show. Like it's about geek culture and and all sorts of other stuff and family life and it's like a personality study. It's a morning show, right? But it like everything has gotten increasingly political over the years. And and I'm the time theoretically where everything is uh uh explicitly political. So do I take the opposite position of Scott Johnson on purpose? No. In fact, I try to not take positions at all. I, I try to, like, the, the only thing that I would say is on those segments, I, I just try to bring some level of explanation. Because uh, contrary to what many people would have you believe in our modern era, not everything is something that you can immediately grok in two seconds and then write a tweet about. You know, uh, uh, society has, I think, fairly conclusively proven that there are uh, uh, very, very, very nuanced uh, le levels to pretty much everything. So what I try to do is bring a little bit of that context because Scott Johnson's not somebody who 
I mean, he might read by volume a lot about politics, but that's not his main thing. He look, uh, I will say this on Scott's behalf. If politics could just not be something that he focused on ever again, and all he had to do was watch crappy movies for film sack, like he would love it. Oh my God. Happier than a pig in feces. That man would be, he would be thrilled. He'd be thrilled to do it. So the, the, the stuff that winds up getting in his craw is like what the stuff that gets in a lot of people's craw, which is stuff that is kind of front of mind in terms of our, our, our media world. And oftentimes the things that go the most viral are the things that are, uh, and I don't mean this to say that they're untrue. I just mean they're weaponized. Like certain things kind of can get out very, very fast. Maybe we shouldn't be saying viral in a pandemic, but uh, they are they are things that that are are unencumbered by nuance, and that's why they travel as fast as they can. And so I guess I just um, I mean I guess this is why I didn't have any friends when I was growing up. But like I mean I I am I am somebody that that needs to do the if not a well actually because well actually has its own package to it like. Uh, I try to at least bring different dimensions to it. It's like this whole story that happened in the Atlantic um, over the last couple of days with Donald Trump saying that he didn't want to go to a World War I cemetery because the people were who <laughs> people who were dead were losers. Um, which number one, factually incorrect. I don't know, man. Take a look at the scoreboard. Like we were, we were definitely winners. The Americans that died there, you know, they got the W. So in, in, in your face, uh, anybody who might say otherwise, but, um, the thing that struck me the most about that story wasn't anything that was in the article. It was the fact that all the sources were anonymous and that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how journalistically there has been more of a more of a, a move toward having very gossipy stories. And this is gossipy. Whether or not you think it's important, it's gossipy. Um, it, it's a guy said a thing. Wasn't a guy is hoarding money. Wasn't a, a, a guy did this other thing. It was a guy said a thing, which I think at this point, I don't know if anybody's, really begging Donald Trump to say more things publicly because love him, love him or hate him. Like that man talks, he talks a lot. And a lot of the stuff he says, you know, isn't exactly in his best interest often when it comes out of his mouth in general. So it's like, all right, if we need, if, if what we're saying here is that we need four anonymous sources because we need more access into the opinions of Donald Trump than, okay, interesting play, interesting play, but that's the stuff that I want to talk about. And that's the stuff that I try to bring to uh, uh, TMS. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 Justin, why the hell can't people wear masks correctly? Why can't they wear masks correctly? Well, we ain't never done it, right? Like on one hand, on like uh, yes, it it's not the uh, it's not the hardest thing to realize. The point is, you want to cover your nose, you want to cover your mouth. I have, I still have this on because, spoiler alert, uh, give you a sense of how good I am with timing. That I I was sitting in front of my computer and then I got caught up in another project and I was gonna change out of what I was drinking beer on my roof in. And then I realized that, oh, my God, I have five minutes. And so I got on last minute. But this is here because I can, I can put it over my nose when I'm going in our building and stuff like that. Now, the hardest concept to master, I am a Florida public school graduate, so, and I was able to figure it out. So it should be fine, right? Based on education parameters, it should only be people in Alabama and Mississippi that are slower than I am, and 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 I got it, so it should be okay. Uh, but also, like we do, we don't do it. We're America has never been stung psychically on this kind of level before, and so 
we fear change. We fear difference. Uh, and part of that is an American thing, and part of that is a human thing. I think in America, we are not used to quote unquote American issues necessarily ever affecting us. Like there is, we've lived our entire lives and reading about wild stuff that happens in our country that it's like, man, that's crazy. Anyway, like, what do the Steelers do? Like, like we, we, we are used to things being far away because we are a very big country. And this is a unique story because it does affect all of us. This thing is, this virus is so pernicious. It spreads in such an insidious way with such a long asymptomatic thing, an asymptomatic period that now all of a sudden we had to figure out like, oh, that means that it matters in New York the way it matters in Biloxi, the way it matters in Anchorage. And we're not used to that. So when you then trickle that down further, that means that we got to work through all these things. What do you mean I can't open my shop? What do you mean I can't go get a beer? What do you mean uh, masks are, are good or bad? I, I, I do find some of the, um, some of the mass stuff is comical, though. I, I do enjoy the, like, um, masks are going to deprive you of oxygen and you'll, like, keel over because you're not getting enough oxygen. It's like, look, if that were the case, there wouldn't be a Japan. Like, there wouldn't... You go to Tokyo, and number one, if you ever want to feel tall in your life as an average-sized human, go to Japan. Like, you will realize, like, like you just want... Like, they should just have places... They Like, next time I go to Japan, I'm just going to bring, like, like basketball nets that I'll lower down a few, uh, uh, a few feet, and I'll just go, ah! They're smaller people. Smaller people. Americans are by and large taller than Japanese people. And so what is a mid... I've never been considered a tall man in my life. And then I went to Tokyo, and boy, did I feel like I was a statuesque human. But they are smaller. By and large, they weigh less. They're a little less fat than we are. If their constitutions can handle wearing a mask, trust me, we can do it. We can do it. I run every day in the mask. I run every day in, in, in this mask. And I have, by and large, I've gotten into a little bit better shape over the last few months. But by and large, I have what would be referred to as a podcaster's physique. You know, the, kind of, the kind of sculpted muscle that only happens when you are sitting in a chair and pontificating your opinions all day. If I can handle it, everybody can handle it. But I get it. I, I get that there are psychic blocks there are elements of no you won't tell me what to do or again back to the fact that we live in a big country anything i do doesn't matter we are only one grain of sand on a big expansive beach so who cares if i wear a mask when i'm going to chili's uh future uh skeleton oh my god if you get a major sports team after you you're either an animal or an action well it's true. It's true. It's always fun. Like, well, like when, when the XFL started up and we got like all these new names and it was like being covered and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, the uh, St. Louis Guardians. It's like, it's always so funny. It, it just feels like it's out of a random name generator. What's your favorite memory of Dragon Con outside of meeting and marrying your wife? <sighs> Um, it's funny because it's kind of the same memory. It was, I met my wife when I, uh, did my first panel at Dragon Con, which was then the NSFW show. Uh, it has now become Night Attack, but it was, uh, the first live show that we've ever done. And... We were in, uh, Charles, you might know offhand, the room in the Hilton that uh, uh, the podcast track used to be in that uh, is like, 
it, it used to be at the top of the escalator that they took out. I don't know if anybody knows the exact room, but we're in that room and it's a 300 capacity. And I, we walk in and everybody's there. No, not uh, an empty seat that's there. And we get told afterward that they had turned away that amount of people while we were doing the show. Now we have never done a live show before. And not only did that give me faith in that show, not only did that make me immediately fall in love with Dragon Con, but it gave me faith for everything. Like uh, uh, certainly in terms of my career uh, in, in podcasting and, and uh, really anything, the idea that, this had been just like any other podcast, just two dudes over two white guys over Skype, yucking it up and uh, that people would come out of there. They'd, they'd come out and, and support us was amazing. It was uh, something that I will never forget. And now there have since been a million different uh, uh, memories and, and some of them are, that means so much to me. Like we did the the party we did after the Diamond Club book where we, uh, for those of you who don't know, we wrote a fake uh, porno book and um, it wound up like selling way more than we thought. And we said we were going to blow all the money we got on it uh, at a Dragon Con party. And we did. That was amazing. It was great. We were in the, in, in, in the Ritz Carlton and like, you knew it was a good party because other people that are more famous than you just started showing up. Like people that, if you, unlike Kishore, Kishore is a dead end drunk like me at Dragon Con, where I could just text him and we'll we'll go find some place to uh, tie one on. You know, like there's also those people at Dragon Con that you constantly hit them up and they just never respond to you. And they were all showing up at our party. That was great. That was amazing. That was that was super fun. Um. Do the maids wear a mask when they come to your apartment? So this is an inside joke on my stream uh, that we, we in a bygone era, used to have cleaners that came in. Uh, but as it turns out, number one, uh, that's not a thing in COVID. And number two, uh, when all me and Ashley do is sit at our house, there's less of an excuse to pick stuff up <laughs> from the floor. So uh, the house is just a little tidier in general these days. Um, man, this went really fast. I, I, I feel like we were just getting started here. All right, so let's go rapid fire questions. We only got a few more minutes left. Uh, if anybody has any, uh, any questions about Dragon Con, about politics, about life, uh, then I will be here uh, uh, to answer them for the next, uh, the next few. But uh, other than that, I'll just uh, I'll just try to remember things that happened to DragonCon and and hope that one day they come back. I I mean, I will say this: I don't know how many of y'all did this. I was never a go get lunch in the mall guy. I've never been a go get lunch in the mall guy. I'm always more a um. There's that uh. You know, you always want to go get food at the bar, wherever you're at, at Dragon Con. It's, it's kind of a travel rule for life, but you never want to sit down. Sitting down is death. Sitting down will kill four hours of your day at Dragon Con. There is no, for whatever reason, none of the businesses, none of the restaurants in Atlanta, in downtown Atlanta, despite the fact that every single year 80,000 nerds show up and every single year another 20,000 college football fans show up to watch those games right across the street. And all the main hotels are down in this sector. They're always surprised. They're always like, wow, like, well, how, we need to call it. Hey, James, I know it's your day off, but you got to come in. They're always shocked. They're always startled. It, it, it is, if it, I can laugh about it now. I'm furious about it uh, uh, when, when, when it happens. But you always want to go to the bar and uh, be very, very nice to the bartender and then, you know, order the things that you know are very quick to get. <laughs> um, 
How many times have I kissed Brian, Brushwood, Dunaway, or Ibbitt? Three very kissable men. Let's uh, let's let's not be uh, let's not mince words here. Very kissable men, the three of them. Uh, I, I don't know if I have ever had the particular honor of kissing any of them on the lips, but I will say I am a big, like, I'm a hugger in general. I don't know if I'll be after COVID, but, like, I'm a hugger in general, and sometimes I'll go for, like, in big moments of celebration, I'll go for the, like, kiss on the head or or something like that. Like, uh, and and so it that'd probably be more with Brian because Brian's slightly shorter than I am, whereas Ibit and and Dunaway, I believe, are taller. Um, but I'll I'll do I'll do one of those. Uh, I'll I'll do like a like a little, little kiss a little kiss on the head. Uh, but other than that, I'm not 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 a lot. How much do I know about Shakespeare? Oh, how much do I know about Shakespeare? Not a whole hell of a lot. Like, uh, uh, you know, I read the plays and stuff in high school. I guess, like, I never really, I never got into drama per se. So uh, I was not a, like, ah, you truly need to read the Bard's work to understand, you know, the, 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 the great drama known as life. Like, I've never really been like that. So I, I, I don't know what's on. I mean, I read Romeo and Juliet. And that's pretty much it. How much do I love playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons? I, I, I had to make a very shameful admission on the Night Attack podcast recently. I, I have never been in a proper campaign, um, which is odd because, like, making stuff up and horsing off and pretending to be a, a fantasy creature uh, is, is right up my alley on a bunch of different levels. So that is uh, that is a major upset. Uh, how much do I love it? Not at all. Cause I have it, but uh, you know, someone wants to work my ass into a campaign. I'll, I'm with it. How interested am I in Pokemon? I was into go. I was into go a lot. Like me and Ash had a had a, re- a hell of a run. Not my wife Ashley, not Ketchum. Uh, we were we were really 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 into Pokemon Go, and we would do a little walk, and we would do the raid days, and we were in a Discord where uh, uh, we would go do stuff. I got really pissed off. I got irrationally pissed off with Pokemon Go because they didn't give us real pvp battle stuff like that's all i wanted because like in my head i'm like yeah the reason why i'm out here like a moron every morning catching these things and i'm i I bought another app to like see exactly how strong they were and blah 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 like and i'm doing these raids the reason why i'm doing it is because when they do a real pvp and i'm doing like some turn-based stuff with my friends these are going to be high stakes awesome battles i was into it and then they did pvp and it was just more like how much can you touch the screen at the you know uh, at, 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 at what velocity can you touch the screen and it's like tip the hat no this isn't touch the screen the game it's pokemon the game pokemon is very simple you catch them all you build your stable and then you go like a good warlord and match wits against other people who are subjugating Pokemon for this bizarre world where we are making them kill each other. That's what you do. So I was very mad and I never played Pokemon go again. Um, come play with adventure Inc. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, Justin Robert young, the gmail.com hit me up, hit me up. Uh, Holy smokes, that was quick. That was that felt quicker than any Dragon Con panel that I've ever been on in my entire life. That was that was very, 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 very fast. Uh, uh I guess maybe I'm just used to doing this, or maybe I've been drinking too much, but like uh normally there's like at least one moment where you look out 
into the audience and if you don't have the buzz then you're like oh anyway who wants to go get chicken fingers like there's like an awkward moment but uh uh this this has gone really really fast Hey, Justin, uh, as you wrap it up, I want to tell you, you've been quoted at least twice this weekend, and you're quoted at least once every Dragon Con weekend for your nobody's watching your podcast or nobody's listening to your podcast, and that's okay panel that you did six years ago. And I mean, it, it just rocked everybody's world, and they're still quoting it today. Well, I appreciate that, and, and we'll do a real, real, real quick send-off that'll kind of touch on those lessons. For anybody that's watching this that wants to get into podcasting, that wants to get into new media, uh, if 13 people listen to your show, you think of that in a certain way. You think of that negatively. You think, oh, my God, only 13 people are listening to it. And the thing I like to say, and I said during that panel, if 13 people each and every week quietly drove to your house and quietly got out of their cars and quietly walked into your open door and quietly sat down in your living room and then very quietly without saying a word just listened intently to everything that you had to say and then they quietly got up and they got back in their cars and they left you would not be a failure you'd be a cult leader and there are lessons you can learn uh, but the, the worst thing you could possibly hope for is if your show wasn't ready, if you weren't ready, if you weren't as good as you can be, if you weren't learning the lessons on how to build an audience, the worst thing that could happen to you is a gigantic amount of people judging you for what you are doing. Uh, uh, there's no substitute for hard work. There's no uh, substitute for looking at yourself critically and getting better. And uh, you just need to know that's part of the road. And uh, the, the, the quiet part of that at the very beginning, there is no shame. No, no, no shame at all in understanding that uh, you are at the beginning. Guys, uh, Justin Robert Young is my name. I swear to God, everybody in this chat room next year, uh, uh, you need to run up on me and say I was in the chat room. Uh, for, for 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 the digital panel, I will buy each and every one of you a drink. I swear to I, I I swear. I don't know how many people are in here. Fifty one people. Fifty one people. I will buy fifty one drinks to to people if you come up to me and say I was in the chat room during uh your your digital Dragon Con panel. It is uh, an honor. Uh, Dragon Con means so much to me, and I know it means so much to everybody that uh is is here. So uh, any way that I could be a part of it is an absolute honor. I will see you guys next year.